There is something deliciously ironic about ESPN anchor L. Duncan reporting on how San Diego Padres infielder Tucupita Marcano had bet on baseball when she herself is heavily involved in ESPN bet advertisements, including this commercial. Are you betting against the home team at their own home filming? Speaking of this TV ad, can I point something out? First, Snoop watch L. Duncan. Second, how in the holy hell of all things physics related would Duncan even be able to see what is on this woman's phone? The angles here do not add up. That aside, this dichotomy of Duncan sort of having one foot in both worlds is another not so subtle reminder about the awkward and confusing marriage between sports and gambling we now have in America. It's safe to say things have not been particularly well regulated over the past few years. Marcano's story is simply bringing about another round of hand wringing and pearl clutching on this topic. Everyone will act surprised and ask, how could this happen? Seriously? The answer to that question is painfully obvious. Sports betting across America was rolled out rapidly without any guardrails or protections put in place. Meanwhile, leagues and teams have been more concerned about landing sponsorship deals with sports betting apps that they've more or less neglected any of the other potential consequences. In other words, this was always bound to happen. Sorry, no amount of workplace signage or employee meetings was ever going to change that. Also, there has to, has to, has to, has to be a better way to convey information to employees than with a text-heavy sign or document pinned to a particle board somewhere in the back of the house. I vividly remember the one we had at the Pete's Coffee and Tea I worked at way back in the day. It was located in this very narrow corner that you couldn't stand to just look at comfortably. Also, there must have been 10,000 plus words of documents and signs just tacked onto this thing. It felt as if you stood and looked at it long enough it was going to suck you into another dimension, probably one akin to a text-based PC ROM game. I'm getting a little sidetracked here. You know, the thing about athletes, coaches, and others connected to sports betting on sports is that it was always bound to happen. It was always going to be a byproduct of this legalization. I mean, it was happening in the past when sports books were banned in most states. Why would that change when it is now easier than ever to place a wager on games? Let me make one thing perfectly clear here. Players, coaches, whomever connected to franchise betting on sports is a bad look. And it's simply unacceptable to have these individuals bet on their team, regardless of if it's to win, to lose, a prop bet, whatever the case may be. Doing this erodes the confidence fans have that the sport is being played as it should be played. It adds doubt on if the results we're seeing are genuine or simply a byproduct of something else. And no one wants to watch sports and wonder if players or coaches are on the take. Everything has been super reactive. That can be seen by how some leagues have needed to tweak existing rules or change procedures, not really expecting the full scope of betting permeating sports. And in defense of teams and leagues, I just don't understand how they were ever going to be prepared for the absolute minutia of player prop bets and how that entire subset of sports wagering has developed. What Jonte Porter did, absolutely ridiculous. He should have 100% no better than to attempt that bullshit. This, by the way, is absolute bullshit unacceptable. But is it no less ridiculous that you can bet on the backup center for the Toronto Raptors to go over or under on various stat categories in a random Tuesday night NBA regular season game? You would either need to have inside information, a personal connection to Porter, or a gambling problem to even want to place those bets in the first place. And the further down the sporting food chain you go, the more dubious this is likely to get. I would hazard a guess and say it's probably more prevalent than we realize at the college level and with lower visibility sports. I mean, the only reason Alabama baseball coach Brad Bohannon, Temple basketball, and Iowa and Iowa State players got flagged is because what they were doing was blatantly obvious. If you keep the actions reasonable, the circle tight, and the sums small, well, you're likely to get away with it, but that is a rabbit hole for someone else to dive down. What I always come back to is the lack of universal clarity in regards to what athletes can and cannot bet on, when they can bet, and all the other nuances that should entail. This is something that should have been hammered out well before sportsbooks outside of Nevada began operations. Hell, 
I would argue this is something that should have been done even before leagues and teams and whomever else started accepting sponsorship money from these sports books. Everyone should have spent a year trying to understand the impact and challenges legalized sports betting was going to have, came up with a clear set of rules, and then communicated those loud and clear to players. This has been a sore spot in the UK and that country's sports betting scene. Everyone knows John Terry, Michael Owen, Wayne Rooney, they all had issues accumulating gambling debts and even some of them were betting on sports. Then even Tony came along and made them all look like amateur punters. Now I know some of you out there are going to say, well, it's the player's responsibility to know all the rules, they should know better. And to that I say, well, good luck. I bet your job has a ton of rules in the employee handbook that you either only vaguely understand or are just completely unaware of. And I bet if there was a transformational shift in your industry, you may not be up to date on all the tweaks and amendments that have taken place. Now the case of Marcano is a bit more black and white. Everyone knows you're not allowed to bet on baseball as a player. It's been that way forever. But for guys like Jamison Williams or Calvin Ridley, I mean, their situations are not as cut and dry here. Personally, I don't believe these stories about athletes betting on sports are as big as they're being made out to be or even all that worrisome. The media loves trotting out the narrative of the ripple effect sports gambling has caused or the shockwave through sports. In reality, it's just people making mistakes. That perhaps is the most unsurprising thing about the entire human experience. It's stupid. It shouldn't happen. Then again, we say the same thing about DUIs and yet nothing's ever been able to stop those from happening. To think that you were going to legalize sports betting and athletes just simply weren't going to wager on games, it was naive. People are gonna do dumb stuff if given the chance. Lord knows I've done countless dumb things over the years. However, the real dumb thing when it comes to this topic is to think that players were never going to bet on sports or that there wouldn't be a few bad apples willing to push things as far as they could. All this desire to frame these things as scandals or an existential crisis for sports as it relates to betting, I just don't get it. This was all very much to be expected. It is suboptimal. I'd argue we were better off without widespread gambling in America. I see no need for arenas or stadiums to have sports books in the first place. If you ever want to make yourself super depressed, go check out the sports book at the Meadowlands at say 11.30 a.m. on any weekday. Going to that and seeing that in person, well, it almost made me never want to place a sports bet again. But it is the world we live in where people hawking sports betting apps also report on players being banned for life because of sports betting. It is certainly confusing. There is without a doubt room for more clarity and improvements to be made, although who knows if those will ever be realized. All that being said, the current situation is certainly not the worst thing in the world. It is an improvement from what we saw in the 1950s when everyone was just illegally betting on sports and the mob was fixing games for a pittance. Look, I understand everyone's desire to claim the sky is falling. But in this case, we have a few indiscretions, not a full-blown situation. Let's all stop acting surprised by things that are not really surprising. Thank you for watching this video. If you'd like to know more about the 1950s college basketball betting scandal that took down an entire program video lower right hand corner of your screen and to understand why ESPN bet has been a flop like a previous ESPN flop video upper right hand corner. Until next time, I am Shine Hollis. This is the Touchback and as always, hashtag take it out to the 25.